If you are rendering lists like this in React Native, then stop doing what you do right now and let's talk about performance. What is the best way to render a list in React Native? The answer should be pretty easy as it's a requirement for like 99% of apps, maybe even 100, but apparently it's not. Let's find out the best solution together. Lists are everywhere in mobile apps, from infinite scrolling feeds in social media to product catalogs in e-commerce apps. They allow us to display large amounts of data efficiently in a compact space. But handling lists in mobile development, as especially in React Native, comes with its own set of challenges. In React Native, lists are crucial because they help structure how data is presented to the user. However, managing performance, um, optimizing memory usage, and ensuring a smooth scrolling experience, especially with large data sets, can be tough. While React Native provides a few built-in solutions, they aren't always enough for handling complex or large-scale data efficiently. Especially beginners can get into a lot of trouble when using an inefficient solution, usually resulting in posts that say React Native is so slow, but I use Flutter. In this video, we will dive into the state of list components in React Native, and we're gonna explore the most popular options and figure out which one is best suited for your app. Also, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button for weekly React Native content before we dive into some code together now. If you get started with React Native, the scroll view is probably the most basic component that you will see to display data on your page and make it scrollable because it wraps the native scrollable views and it can be used, it is okay in the beginning for some really, really basic stuff because scroll view renders all its React child components at once but this has a performance downside. We're gonna talk about performance in a second. Beyond this basic case of displaying like text in it or maybe have like five buttons that you wanna make scrollable, I don't really see a lot of use cases where you should use scroll view. To improve this, the next better component that you should use is definitely the flat list. Flat list is an improvement over the scroll view. Um, it has support for a lot of features and it basically renders items lazily when they are about to appear on the screen and they will uh, remove the items from the scroll view again once they disappear out of the screen. It comes with a bunch of additional cool things. For example, what you get is you can have pull to refresh, you can have separator components, header, footer support, and you can also scroll to an index or even have multiple columns. On top of that, there is a variation of the flat list called section list, which pretty much has exactly, if you just compare this, it pretty much has exactly the same uh, set of functionalities. However, with a section list, you can have these kind of sections between your data sets and you can also make them sticky. So there are a couple of options in the section list. However, as there are no big difference, let's stick to the flat list for the further comparison. In general, you can get pretty far with the flat list component. There's also a little guide here on optimizing the flat list configuration. Uh, it first describes a few terms and then it shows some ways of using different props of the flat list to improve your performance. However, you're gonna notice that actually all of these have pros and cons. So here as well, initial number to render. And just as an example, if you change the initial number of items to render, that might be good in terms of like the memory footprint because you only render three items. However, if you only render three items, you might actually have white space and blank cells on your page. So there's always a trade-off between these things. But again, if you use it, you can include memoization, might not be a thing in the future. You can use pagination. And some people say that, hey, um, I haven't worked on very complex projects so far, but Flatlist and Pagination have worked well for me. And I agree, I, in my tutorials, used Flatlist in many cases because it was usually for basic examples enough. One super helpful addition to this is definitely this post about don't re-render all Flatlist items. Pretty much the essence of this is that if your data looks like an array um, like this, and you change elements because in your list you update stuff, everything will redraw. So essentially you want to have something like this where you only pass IDs to your flat list so it renders these items and then later you extract the data from another object and update that object. 
that can totally improve the performance of your flat list items and then flat list might be enough if you handle all the rest like uh, having uh, slim components, use memoization, use callbacks, make sure your images are not oversized and you use like a good uh, caching layer or you have the, the expo image component used in your app. However, at some point you might notice that you have drops in FPS, so below 60 FPS, or your app becomes sluggish and slow to respond, or you might even see blank cells, white cells in your app while scrolling. All of this is an indicator that you should probably go for the next better package, which is the Flash List. Flashlist is a package that was created by Shopify and is a fast and performer React Native list. No more blank cells, so the problem I just mentioned. And the great thing about this is that it has pretty much the similar props as the React Native Flatlist component. So they said in some uh, some text, if you know how Flatlist works, you know how Flashlist works. And if you look at this, these are pretty much the same props. Uh, the only new thing is the estimated item size that Flashlist uses to improve the performance of the item. But of course, there's so much more going on under the hood and I recommend you read this article about instant performance upgrade from Flatlist to Flashlist by the Shopify engineering blog about how they approach this problem, which metrics they use and what is going on under the hood of Flashlist. Basically it's like recycling components under the hood to maximize performance, they're reducing the memory footprint and um, there are a lot of things. So let's just take an example here from Alex. Uh, how can I get to this? He made a nice example. On the right we have super smooth scrolling of a Flashlist component. On the left he was using Flatlist and it got stuck all the time. Also if you check out all the benchmarks you're gonna see that Flashlist is definitely the better and more superior component compared to Flatlist. However, even in Flashlist land, not everything is perfect. You need to be aware of that. So I got this one comment. Uh, I'm having not so nice day trying to get 125 items vertical scroll. Each item has horizontal scroll. Uh, the main items are different heights and I have to programmatically scroll to some items. If you see something like this, you might have a hard time with Flashlist and you might have to go back to Flatlist or a completely different implementation. And also my good friend Aaron Bereskin, he was on my podcast a couple of times. Um, they worked on this, uh, I think it's called the Ascension Bible application. Doesn't matter too much, but they pretty much had the problem of really long paragraphs. And of course, if you have like a reader app, you might want to jump to a paragraph. And with Flashlist, that can be a problem especially if your estimated item size isn't fixed. So he had different item sizes um, in the initial number to render. I will put this in the comments as well. Uh, he actually followed this up at some point, but I actually found a way how to make the scroll with Flashlist work, but it requires to scroll to the given index at least three times within uh, a thousand millisecond timeout. So, uh, and also during that time you have to like hide your uh, view. So it's a bit challenging here and this is just reminder that Flashlist is definitely epic. It is a great improvement over Flatlist, but that doesn't mean you won't have some headache at some point. However, for 95% of apps, the recommendation is to use Flashlist. This will solve most of your performance issues if you mind all the other stuff that we already talked about in terms of like small components, memoization, the arrays, stuff with IDs. And from there on, you can basically tweak and improve your performance further because you're already on the best thing if you upgrade from Flatlist to Flashlist. To wrap it up, I want to mention some other solutions I found out there. However, uh, all of them come with their own problems or are not really applicable anymore. So the first one was actually from Magello React Native Wishlist. I wish that this component existed. This had a really great outlook and if you know Magello, they do know their stuff and make performant things happen. But in a long recap, I will link this article as well. I think Mark probably wrote how they tried to improve list performance, how they actually made really, really performant lists, even more performant than flesh lists. But at the end, they just couldn't like completely make it work. It was too verbose and some things didn't happen. You can, again, still check out the repository, but be very careful if you want to use this. However, maybe we're going to see something like this again come up in the future. There's also this other component called Recycler List View. If you read the article on the Shopify blog, you will see that this is actually used under the hood by Flashlist and 
this was recommended in the past for big data sets and it was a good component. However, if I see something like this, I would be very careful in how far it is still maintained. So I think at this point, it's better to use flash list than the recycler list view, but you can also convince me different in the comments. My friend Gary, who was on the podcast, who's working at Kendall Finances, also recommended this one, the React Native table view. They have a fork at Kendall Finance and I checked out the initial repository and that one looked pretty dire as well. So I think that's the reason why they forked it. However, this is, as far as I know, only a native iOS table view for React Native with JSON support. So if you're interested in like the best performance and the best native look and feel on iOS, then probably the React Native table view could be an ID for your application. However, keep in mind, from what I've seen, this doesn't have an Android implementation. Um, feel free to <laughs> implement this in the future, but I think for the moment, this is only a solution for iOS. And finally, if nothing of the things I've shown you works for you and you have still the worst performance on earth, then you might follow the steps of Samuel who said, currently implementing my own list renderer using React Native Skia. That is of course another way to do it. So if you can do it, you can achieve something that looks pretty smooth. So this was his demo. Um, I think that looks pretty amazing. It's like the native, yeah, that is even really, really impressive. He also shared some code. So that is might be the little downside here. Then you have to implement your own drawing. So it's quite complex. You have to paint directly on the canvas. And uh, this was the full code. I can't, I can't even zoom into this so big it's so big can i zoom out and then zoom in well you see there's a lot of drawing and stuff going on so i assume 90% of react native developers don't want their list rendering to be like this i just want to put it here that there is the possibility to do even more manual stuff if you're like looking for the last 2% of performance here all right to recap Use scroll view for really, really basic things and use flat list or section list for very simple lists. If you need like header, footer, pull to refresh or more features and you don't feel like using flash list for whatever, why? But usually use flash list if you want better performance. It's a drop in replacement for most apps. You can just replace flat list with flash list. Yeah, you might have to go from Expo Go to Dev Client, but you should have done that anyway. And of course, what's also super important at the same time is follow best practice for React and for reducing the memory consumption of list items, components and images. Be especially careful when updating list items and how React handles states. Again, remember the article I've shown you and read through that. Finally, from the Shopify article was a great line that caught me, as some developers rarely saw issues with their lists on newer iOS devices. And this is absolutely me. And this is your reminder to test your app on low end devices. In many cases, you won't see any performance problems on the latest iPhone or whatever you're using, but get an old Motorola or whatever kind of device and use Android on it. And you're going to definitely notice the performance problems of your lists. Would you like to see another deep dive into performance of React Native apps and how to debug and improve it? Let me know in the comments and I'll get straight to work. And in the meantime, you can check out galaxies.dev in our plus plan if you need personalized support with react native and want to join bi-weekly coachings and also here's another video on 10 react native tips that you should definitely know about check it out i think it's pretty good and i'll catch you in the next one so until then happy coding simon